Hi, Jason from Better Batteries. I'm here today to talk to you about why batteries get hot and the different things that can cause heat. A battery is a chemical reactor, so I won't go in, into the depths of how the P reacts, acid reacts with the lead and go into a lesson of chemistry, but it's, it's essentially, it's like a form of electroplating and, and in that process you will generate heat. I think we've all charged a battery and noticed that they're warm at the end of a charge cycle. Uh, we always recommend that at the end of a charge cycle that you allow the battery to normalise back to room temperature before you start using the battery again. It's just being nice or being kind to the battery. Uh, batteries can generate heat in a variety of different ways and from a variety of different causes. Uh, you can get swelling in cases and, um, and I'll run through just a few of them. Probably the, uh, the, one of the reasons that we see batteries swell uh, or, or, or show signs of extreme heat is from shorts in plates. So if two plates manage to touch each other or if the plates touch the bus bar. That can often happen if a battery's been dropped or, or it's been dropped on an angle, it'll force the plate underneath up into the bus bars on top that, that join all the plates together. We've had batteries back with large impacts where they've been tightened with a, with a battery clamp onto a, onto a bolt and that's forced the plate up into the, the bus bars. Uh, you can get all sorts of you know, transport issues. So probably the biggest giveaway with a shorted cell is that the terminal voltages will be quite low, down around about the 10, 10 and a half volts. So if you put a multimeter on your battery on the voltage setting and you get a terminal voltage around the 10 or, or, or near enough volts and you charge the battery and it won't come up past that, that's normally a, a, the first indicator that that battery has a shorted cell shorted plates and cell in the battery. If you try and charge that battery for a period of time, that when the two plates touch, they can create a heater element. And I've had batteries in my own shed at home at like 110 degrees, and they take forever to cool down. So it can be uh, something to always watch a battery while it's being charged to make sure that, especially if it's a new battery or a battery you're not familiar with, or a battery you bought second hand, always check it and watch it for the first few charges to make sure it's okay. The other thing that can cause batteries to get hot is, is charge current and also discharge current. So if, if, if I push uh, a lot of current into a battery, like if I've got a you know, 50 amp battery and I use a 200 amp charger on it and it doesn't stop charging, and there's a number of reasons that that can happen, then that batch obviously will get hot. You can't pour a, a, a bucket of water into a cup so um, the other thing is voltage. Um, quite common for solar regulators to fail and push 18 volts or whatever the panel voltage is onto a battery. That can also get a battery very, very hot. So that'd be something else if you, if you see swelling and you've got a solar reg, always check what's coming out of that. Interestingly, with, with solar panels, as they bypass when they fail, most, most commonly they bypass. Um, the other thing is Constant discharge whilst charging. So that's quite pr uh, predominant in things like under bonnet charging or DC to DC charging in four drive caravan market. Um, you'll, you'll often find that um, uh, you could have a three way fridge in a caravan that's pulling 16 amps and you drive for nine hours, you're constantly pulling current out of the battery whilst you're putting current in. And again, a battery is a chemical reactor and if you don't turn that off, and if the battery's under bonnet as well, that can create a lot of heat. So as you can see, there's quite a few different reasons that batteries can get hot. Uh, so the other one that often gets overlooked is discharge. So if I've got a 2000 watt load on a battery at 12 volts, I divide the 12 into the 2000. Uh, I don't know what that gives me, but it'll be say 20 amps. And now at six volts, when I divide 2000 into six, it's a much bigger number than at 12 volts. So you have to watch your load and the amperage that's being created as a battery comes down in voltage. That can also generate heat in a battery. Uh, environmental conditions. I think in a previous video I've mentioned with temperature compensation, things like marine where we put batteries in an environment that they get very hot, we need to adjust the voltage for that temperature. So if we haven't adjusted the temperature, if I put a battery in a really hot environment and I hold the voltage high, that also can, can, can make a battery boil. 
You must understand that our battery is very resilient. It's not bulletproof uh, and it's not indestructible. There is a small amount of moisture in the battery and if you get that charge current or that charge environment where that moisture gets so hot that it creates steam, steam is 100 degrees, the cases are rated at 90 degrees and you will get swelling in the case. Swollen cases don't necessarily mean the battery's destroyed or, or non-functional. It just means that there's been a heat event. Our batteries are a press fit into the case, as you'll see by this battery. There is no sump in the bottom. They're actually the plates and the separators are, are pressed into the cases. So even though you might get a bow on the end, the plates are well contained within the battery internally. So just something to keep in mind that um, bowing doesn't mean a battery's destroyed. In fact, we often see batteries go the other way. Internally within the battery, there's some small rubber caps on the top that are release the pressure when there's pressure differences. Cold air, you start charging a battery, the air gets warm, at different to the outside temperature, change of temperature, they need to release. If they don't release, they'll cause a bit of a bow and sometimes they'll suck back in. So again, have a look at your terminal voltage. If your battery's working fine, but it's got some swelling, it may not mean that it's destroyed. If you ever have any questions, feel free to visit our website, www.betterbatteries.com. Get a phone number for any of our regional offices around the world. We're happy to take a phone call if you've got any questions. Thanks for your time.